Okay, so I did not prepare this one because uh, I'm going to go ahead and go off the ring. So we're going to do a hero today. Let me just uh, get a little bit of my research, my Word document. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Okay. So this is better because I can look at the web while I'm on. Uh, while I'm, you know, doing my thing. So today we're doing Green Lantern. Green Lantern is uh, my... Batman is obviously my favorite character of all time. And my personal hero. But I also have an, a couple other personal heroes. And I have... I have two other... Well, okay. It, I, my second favorite superhero has always been a debate. Uh, it's always a uh, circle of Daredevil... Superman and Green Lantern. Those are my three favorites. My three second favorites. Those, all three of those tie for second place. So we're gonna do Green Lantern today. And uh, so let's start. Let's start. Okay. <clears throat> so Green Lantern made his first appearance in All American Comics 16, number uh, July 1940. Now, back in the day, DC Comics wasn't actually a thing. So there were several companies, comic publishers that would make up the publications of DC Comics. There was uh, Detective Comics itself, there was uh, uh, Allied Comics, like uh, American Allied Comics, and there was uh, All-Star Comics or something like that. So one of them contained the Detective Comics brand, one of them uh, contained the uh, the Action Comics brand, and uh, which was uh, American Allied or whatever. And then, uh, All American Comics was like, uh, had Green Lantern, and, uh, Flash Comics had Flash, and, uh, all that different stuff. What else am I forgetting? Uh, More Fun Comics had Aquaman and Green Arrow. Uh, so yeah, so, Green Lantern first comes out, All American Comics, 16, 1940, of July of that year, and... This was different from uh, the Green Lantern we know today. So, obviously with Green Lantern, Green Lantern is, is known as a legacy character. And what a legacy character is, is a character who has had multiple iterations. And for Green Lantern, he's probably the most uh, iterations. Because we've had, uh, we've had uh, the first one that I'm going to talk about, which is Alan Scott. We've had Hal Jordan. We have Guy Gardner, John Stewart. Uh... Kyle Rayner, which took over over the 90s, and then we have the two newer ones, which are Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz, and so we first start off with Alan Scott. Now, Alan Scott is basically, Alan Scott's origin goes like, you know, Alan Scott was, he he was a magic-based character, uh, obviously he didn't start that way, but he was, a, he was an engineer that worked on a railroad, it collapsed. He found this green flame, and it was like the magical green flame that gave him his powers. And he uh, he found like the there was like this this metal, and he 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 molded the metal into a lantern, and he also made a ring, and he he, he was Green Lantern, and the flame instructed him to build this, to fashion a ring, and to fashion a lantern, and so he became Green Lantern, and so he. Uh, Significant things about him, his costume is very different from the other Green Lanterns. He doesn't have the green, black, and then the white gloves. He has the red cape and the purple, and, you know, it's more it's more uh, red mixed with green than green itself. So, another significant thing is he has nothing to do with the Green Lantern Corps itself. Uh, it, it sort of relates, because they go back in the 80s and 90s and kind of say, well, it may have been a prototype or, like, it may have been created by the Guardians later, and like, you know, other Green Lanterns didn't know anything about it, but whatever, that doesn't matter. What matters is, is that he has nothing, he's not a member of the Green Lantern Corps, uh, unlike the other Green Lanterns. So, he was a very okay character, there was not a lot to him, his weakness was uh, wood. Uh, th there was not a lot to Alan Scott. Alan Scott was just a superhero, with cool powers and a, and a cool visual. And he had a cape. Green Lanterns don't have a cape. Uh, and so, along the years, obviously, in the 1950s, with the Comics Code Authority and comic books kind of being outlawed, not outlawed, but, you know, being thrown in the press in a negative way, 
the only three DC characters uh, that were relevant and actually were published were Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Uh, so during like the 50s, most of the 50s, the Flash and Green Lantern, those are the two significant ones other than the Trinity, were not published. So, you know, that was, that sucked. So then we go to 1959, where we have Hal Jordan. Now Hal Jordan, let me see, now Hal Jordan, freaking, who is my favorite Green Lantern, Hal Jordan first appeared in Showcase 22, October of 1959. So, he appeared... So, there was this editor named Julius Schwartz. This is going to be a longer video. Because Lex Luthor a, a, has a long history. But Green, Green Lantern has his own book. Green Lantern is, you know... In my opinion, he's the third most important DC character. There's Batman and Superman, which tie. Superman's probably first, Batman's second, even though Batman's kind of more popular now. But those two are kind of the two. And then there's Green Lantern. And then there's The Flash, and then there's Wonder Woman. So, Green Lantern has a very long history, and this editor, Julius Schwartz, kind of brought back DC Comics, and he was responsible for reinvigorating the brand. So, before, uh, before Hal Jordan, before Hal Jordan, basically, you had another character who was reinvented. There were, like, four characters that were reinvented. There was Green Arrow, Flash, uh, Green Arrow, Flash, Hawkman, and the Atom. Uh, Hawkman's new origin was, instead of being this re, uh, this reincarnated hawk person, he was an alien. Adam used to just be a small guy who fought villains. Now, he was a guy who actually could shrink, so he actually had powers. And then the Flash, of course, the big reboot, Flash was originally Jay Garrick, who got his powers from messing with Liquid. Uh... You know, <laughs> so, he was, you know, uh, he wasn't that interesting. And then in Showcase, October of 1956, amid three years before Hal Jordan, this new Flash named Barry Allen with this flashy red and yellow costume and a mask to boot came out. And he was like a reboot of the Flash. And so we had a reboot of Green Lantern, this new character named Hal Jordan. Now, instead of it being magic-based... It was sci science fiction. So the whole origin was you had the Guardians of the Universe, these, these blue-skinned beings who were older than the Big Bang and are omnipotent and somewhat... Uh, well, they're omniscient and somewhat omnipotent. They're extremely powerful. They know a lot. And they decide that they're going to build the peacekeeping task force of the Green Lanterns. Now, the whole thing, obviously, uh, it's a uh, ring that can uh, make constructs fly, laser blast force fields, it's extremely powerful, it's the most powerful weapon in the universe, basically, so, well, it, it, it's usually called that, but of course, there's like the white lantern ring, and there's like, anti-life uh, anti -life equation from dark side, but yeah, it's, it's the most powerful weapon in the universe, and uh, you have to wield it, you have to have great willpower, and the whole thing with uh, uh, fucking Hal Jordan's origin was, of course, you had Abin Sir, which was the most decorated uh, green lantern of all time, he got injured in a uh, battle, came down to Earth. First person uh, that was there was uh, Hal Jordan. Hal Jordan took the ring. He said, you know, fight, fight evil with this. Never give in to fear. Always have will. And Hal Jordan was a willful being. He had a lot of willpower. He was a little cocky, but that was kind of his charm. Hal Jordan has always been cocky, but he's funny, he's jokey, and he has a heart of gold. He has a heart of gold. And, you know, his father died, so he uh, kind of fell into his father's footsteps as a uh, test pilot. And he's a, you know, they call him Highball, that's his name, but he's really, he's really high octane. He's a, he's a, he's a wild card. So that was his whole thing. And then he was trained by Sinestro, and of course Sinestro betrayed them. And then he built his own accordion ring of uh, fear, and the rest is history. So... Throughout the years, there's been many Green Lanterns. The most prominent is Green is uh, Hal Jordan. But after that, they introduced a character named uh, they introduced a character named Guy Gardner. Now, Guy Gardner is uh, Guy Gardner was kind of they introduced the idea that you know if Hal Jordan ever got injured, you know we would need a uh, replacement lantern. 
And so the uh, so he got injured and like how Guy Gardner came around, he kind of screwed with everything. So Guy Gardner was this gym teacher and he was really cocky and he was kind of an asshole. And he, you know, you know Hal had his cocky moments, but he was really a good guy. Guy Gardner wasn't really that good of a guy. So you had Guy Gardner, but of course Hal kept coming back. And then you have John Stewart, which was a really cool character because John Stewart was, you know, it was kind of the whole. Uh, civil rights movement and you had characters like Luke Cage and then of course you had characters like John Stewart the Green Lantern. Now John Stewart the whole deal with him was he was this black guy, he lived in, you know, an uh, okay neighborhood and this black guy grew up to get a degree. He became an engineer and he went into the army as well. And he also was yeah, he was an engineer and he went into the army and he was kind of a more serious Green Lantern. But, you know, they they keep introducing but still how how is the most notable Green Lantern they keep in keeping this going. And so in the 90s, they're like, you know what? Green Green Lantern isn't that interesting. You know, we all talk we always talk about how important Hal Jordan is. He's the greatest Green Lantern. Well if he's the greatest Green Lantern, how is he not interesting? So they play him. So, you know, in the nineties, the early nineties you had the death of Superman. Okay. And then you had Nightfall. So basically the three most popular characters went through a metamorphosis and went through the ringer. So they gave Superman a throwaway and they gave Batman a fucking throwdown. So who else would they give a throwdown to? They gave a throwdown to Green Lantern. So during the death of Superman, the last arc, which is the return of Superman, Cyborg Superman and Mongol destroy Coast City, the city that's the home of Hal Jordan. Hal is so distraught over this that he builds the city with his green energy. Uh, obviously, that's a whole lot of constructs, so it only lasts about 10 minutes. And the Guardians call and they're like, hey, Hal, you're misusing the power. Come back to base. Let's talk. So Hal goes insane, uses the projection as energy to refuel his ring, goes to Oa, kills just about every Green Lantern there is, including the Guardians, gets all their rings, and becomes Parallax. Now it would be later issued that Parallax wasn't really Hal. It was this entity that possessed Hal and made him do all these awful things. Now, the entity is tied to uh, the yellow energy of fear, and he's actually the entity of fear. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's with uh, he's with Sinestro. So, Ganthet, who's basically the greatest of the Guardians, he also created the Blue Lantern Corps, was like, you know, our only hope is to make a ring and send it to another person. So he sent a ring and here comes Kyle Rayner, who is basically the second greatest Green Lantern. Now, Kyle Rayner, the deal with him is he was an artist. He was a comic book artist. He was down on his luck, but Ganthet gave him the ring in person, and he was the Green Lantern. And Kyle was a really cool successor because Hal was really willful, and he would have really powerful constructs. But they weren't that creative. They were more creative than Guy Gardner and more creative than Jon Stewart, but they weren't that creative. With Kyle Rayner, you had the coolest images. You had these dragons and these monsters and these cool characters that he would create because he was an artist. That was a cool thing about uh, Kyle Rayner was he was an artist, so he was really creative. And when he created these constructs, they were the most imaginative things ever. So he was really cool as a Green Lantern. Uh, they did a couple things with him. He joined the Justice League, of course, like they all do. His girlfriend got stuck in a fridge by a supervillain named Major Force, who's a Captain Atom villain. I won't be covering him. He's cool, but y'all won't really enjoy that. But a lot of things happened. Uh, he was cool, but eventually the king had to come back. And around 2006 or 2007, this young upstart writer named Jeff Johns decides, I'm going to bring Hal Jordan back. And he brings Hal Jordan back. And before we kind of established that, Hal Jordan had taken the reign as the Spectre, the, uh, the spirit of vengeance for DC. And he had kind of, to, to amend the wrong things he did, he became the Spectre. And, you know, it was, it was weird because uh, you had Spectre be a previous person. Uh, Jim Corrigan, but then you had the Green Lantern be the Spectre, and it was this weird thing, people would see Hal and stuff, but in Green Lantern Rebirth, which is written by, of course, Jeff Johns, Green Lantern Rebirth by Jeff Johns and 